NVIDIA beats analysts' expectations, but its stock is still way down. So what's going on? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. NVIDIA earnings calls have taken on a role previously reserved only for Federal Reserve press conferences. They are perhaps the most watched event on Wall Street at this point, and yesterday's was particularly weird. On the one hand, as you'll see, NVIDIA beat analysts' expectations. However, the stock is weighed down on the basis of forward-looking projections, and in many ways interpretation of this is sort of a Rorschach test for how you feel about AI right now. So let's talk about what was reported first. The first wave of news all followed a theme similar to this one in The Guardian, NVIDIA rides big tech's AI investment to beat Wall Street's sky-high expectations. NVIDIA's revenue in the past quarter was $30.04 billion. That's its highest ever and a 122% increase from the year before. Analysts had anticipated $28.7 billion in revenue, so NVIDIA beat that in a significant way. The New York Times had a similar take, with their piece titled, NVIDIA Revenue Jumps 122% in Positive Sign for Tech's AI Boom. The Washington Post, NVIDIA results show AI boom continues despite recent bubble fears. The Times piece read, This summer, Wall Street and Silicon Valley began to question whether generative artificial intelligence could produce enough benefits to justify its staggering costs. But the chipmaker NVIDIA showed on Wednesday that enthusiasm for AI is still running hot. The Post points out that the majority of NVIDIA's revenue came from sales to big tech companies like Amazon, Google, Meta, and Microsoft. However, even though these earnings did beat analyst expectations, there is still clearly an underlying concern. Said Investing.com senior analyst Thomas Montiero, while the numbers indicate that the AI revolution remains alive and well, the smaller beat compared to the previous quarters adds to multiple warning signs across the tech space earlier in the earnings season. The Guardian also wrote, Analysts welcomed the results despite signs that NVIDIA's extraordinary sales growth might ultimately slow. Said Jacob Bourne, a technology analyst with eMarketer, the company continues to benefit from a market paradox. Big tech's aggressive AI investment strategies drive massive demand for NVIDIA's chips, even as these same companies invest in developing their own silicon. Now, there are some specific NVIDIA-related issues that people are looking for. Once again, Bourne said, As competitors like AMD intensify their efforts, the timely release of NVIDIA's next-generation Blackwell chip will be essential for maintaining its dominant position in the increasingly competitive AI chip market. From Reuters this morning, NVIDIA's subdued forecast dampens enthusiasm in AI chip stocks after steady rally. Reuters writes, the company's shares were down 3.4% after it forecast third-quarter gross margins that could miss market estimates and revenue that was largely in line. NVIDIA has crushed Wall Street's estimates for several quarters on surging demand for AI chips, leading investors to bank on the company's penchant for routine blowout forecasts. The stock's strength has been a pillar of the market's rally through both this year and the past year, leading to what some say are ultimately insurmountable forecasts. Summing that position up is J.J. Kinahan from IG North America, who wrote, They beat, but this was just one of those situations where expectations were so high, I don't know that they could have had a good enough number for people to really be happy. The BBC points out that while analysts have grown used to NVIDIA producing spectacular sales growth, the latest results indicate that the rate of growth was starting to slow. Said Matt Britzman, senior equity analyst at Hargreaves Lansdowne, it's less about just beating estimates now. Markets expect them to be shattered, and it's the scale of the beat today that looks to have disappointed a touch. A Thursday morning piece from the Wall Street Journal really summed up the shifting sentiment. NVIDIA, they wrote, can't escape shadow of AI spending fears. Strong results from chipmaker don't ease worries about durability of big tech's AI investments. So what are those concerns? Well, we frequently discussed influential pieces like Sequoia partner David Kahn's AI's $600 billion question blog. Kahn himself tweeted yesterday, NVIDIA was asked our $600 billion question on Q2 call. Where is the customer's customer's revenue? Their answer, one, traditional workloads will move from CPU to GPU, two, ChatGPT and coding AI, three, Meta saves dollars using GPOs for algorithms, four, countries buying GPUs. Is this enough to justify the hype? Holding aside the weirdness of Sequoia being one of the main cheerleaders of a hype call, I do think that this is the central question. And the thing that Wall Street is struggling to figure out is how should they value a company that is clearly doing well, that is the market leader in the most important segment of the market, that continues to see strong demand, but where there is a sense that the ROI of the companies that are buying NVIDIA's product might never come to pass. For many who continue to be bullish, it comes back to what Thomas Montiero wrote, investors should not fear a deeper sell-off. The massive growth in data center chips shows that companies worldwide still have no other option but to keep ramping up their AI expenses regardless of the costs. And this is the point, of course, that the venture capitalist Sarah Tavell made recently in her blog post, that the simple fact of the matter is that the hyperscalers are going to continue to invest incredible amounts of money to build out their AI infrastructure. They believe and have articulated over and over again that they believe that underinvestment is by far more concerning than overinvestment. And what's more, those companies have big, healthy balance sheets. 
even overspending on AI isn't likely to hurt them, except perhaps in the eyes of Wall Street investors. Now, none of this is to say that NVIDIA and the Magnificent Seven stock prices have to stay the same. Wall Street gets to decide if it wants to handicap the potential of a bubble by decreasing the price of these shares. That's exactly what Wall Street is supposed to do. It's supposed to figure out how to interpret all the signals. These ones are just really complicated because they don't follow previous patterns. Radner Capital had a thoughtful post on Twitter, writing, I think there are two simple but important questions to ask when trying to assess the durability of NVIDIA's business model. One, will model scaling laws hold? Meaning, does more compute lead to better model performance and ultimately more use case productivity and cost savings? The answer right now is yes, and I don't see any evidence that this is changing. Two, will NVIDIA's market leadership persist? Not only in market share, this is a given for the immediate term, but in product performance, obviously goes hand in hand with market share long term, and their ability to get systems embedded within their customers. The answer right now is yes, and I don't see any evidence that this is changing. The arms race continues as frontier model makers race to the next plateau to establish market leadership, and NVIDIA remains the leading accelerator option on the market. No signs of AI CapEx slowing. An important long-term risk factor is whether we have fewer frontier model companies in the future. Next-gen models will require multiples of the compute of current generations, but there may not be as many. It's too early to tell, and because it's so early, it's important to stay humble around how little we know. I think in many ways, the simplest and yet most sophisticated assessment came from meme account Dr. Parikh Patel, who wrote, The reason NVIDIA stock is down after beating earnings is because there is nobody left on earth to buy more. Now, one wrinkle on this, and something that I think is worth keeping in mind, Yesterday, I tweeted, Wall Street softening on AI has nothing to do with AI and everything to do with us moving into a rate-cutting cycle. And what I mean by that is that in the entire period since ChatGPT launched, we've been in either an interest rate hiking cycle or a hold rates higher for longer stasis. In fact, ChatGPT launched in the midst of the fastest rate hiking cycle in 40 years. As it did so, Wall Street latched on to the AI narrative not only because of conviction that it really was going to change everything and represent actual productivity increases and enhancement to GDP. I think all of those beliefs are legit, but the intensity with which it clung to the AI narrative, I believe also had to do with a counterbalancing force to the gloominess and practical liquidity decreases that were associated with that hiking cycle. And indeed, for the next couple of years, AI enthusiasm was constantly at war with macro questions and instability to see what would be the biggest influence on Wall Street investor mindsets. And frankly, for a lot of that time, AI has won. Now, however, we're entering a different period. For months, the writing has been on the wall that we were finally coming to the actual rate cutting cycle. And I don't think it's surprising then that AI enthusiasm has softened as investors get to pick back up that other narrative and all of the benefits that they associate with interest rate cuts. Now, like I said, in the same way that I don't think the enthusiasm for AI was just predicated on that, I think that it was perhaps just a little bit more intense. I don't think we're going to see some massive falling out of love with AI either. I just think you're going to have more diverse opinions, more people arguing that prices shouldn't be what they are, and more things competing for attention in a way that naturally decreases focus on the AI sector. And with the first rate cut coming up in September, we will be able to see if that theory is right pretty soon. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.